Alrighty, race fans, welcome to another edition of Track Review. I know it's been a long time and everybody's been calling me. When are you going to do another video? Well, it's been it's been really, really busy. 20, 2020 was off the chart, and last year, 2021, was stressful and busy on a number of fronts, but we won't uh, bother to explain any of that right now. But here we are, February 2022, and um, I thought, well... Well, let's try to do another uh, track review. So, ostensibly in this box, and this will be uh, an unboxing. I'm not a big fan of unboxing videos per se, but we're going to do this. This is a Tyco Electric Racing. Uh, well, it's not Turbo Hoppers, Racing Hoppers. That's it, Racing Hoppers. So, it looked kind of interesting. The price was right, and uh, we're going to see exactly what we get for our money. All right, uh, we had our test driver, Ernest T. Bass, come in from out of town to help us out on this one. So he's going to get his uh, pig sticker out and open this box up and uh, see what we got. So we're all going to learn together exactly what do you get for your money with some things on eBay. Oh, I can honestly say the guy packed it really well, so he'll get good reviews on that. I mean, sometimes it's just terrible what you get. It really is. It's like they just have no clue how to pack things right. So, evidently this person decided that uh, they wanted to uh, get this thing to me in one piece. Alright, let me zoom in on that. All right, Tyco Electric Racing, Racing Hoppers. Um, they've done a number of off-road things over time, and this is just kind of an deterioration on that. I'm guessing that the track's molded in tan. Uh, I think at this point in their production history, they also did some radio control stuff that a lot of this was based off of. Um, feel free to leave you know any uh, comments down below in the comments section regarding those uh, Tyco RC cars. But uh, yeah, anyway, so far the box looks pretty good. And there we have it. Evidently this guy was uh, pretty conscientious about uh, packing this thing up. I mean the photographs in the uh, eBay thing, all this stuff was loose. It wasn't wrapped up like this, so he must have taken his time to uh, get it all in here. And we have the instruction set. What else is there? Parts list. Price list. Yeah, there we go. We'll take a look at that here in a second. Set that aside. Alright, so let's uh, shake this thing out and see what we got. Alright guys, here we go. Uh, we took all the track down and put it on a table and buffed it out with our sanding sponge and got some big orange, wiped it down. Um, vacuum cleaner got the slots all clean. I mean, you can see how black my hands are from the process. The track was actually kind of dirty, uh, but more like it had been just sitting out on a table for a long time or, or whatever. I mean, I don't know when this set was made. Probably late 1990s. I don't know if there's any date. Or anything on these boxes, but uh, 1988, 1988, 1988, and it was printed in the USA. Into really, this is not uh, maybe not packed out in China. Maybe Chinese made parts, but 1988, it could have been packed out here in the U.S. So. Here we go. Contents made in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and China, and the USA, as marked thereon. So, that's an interesting thing right there. It's not 100% Chinese-made uh, product. But anyway, um, all the pieces seem to be there. There's a few broken tabs on the track, um, but I nothing out of the ordinary. It looks... A little better than expected for its age. I haven't checked out the cars yet, but um, 
anyway, we'll get to uh, putting this thing up and seeing if we can get some laps out of it. All right, well, Ernest is uh, busy trying to sort this thing out and see where we get on all the different pieces. Um, all right, I got to working on the cars, and I guess you can kind of see them. Uh, one of them is a turbo hopper, the other one is an aero turbo, so I guess they call the set what? Racing hoppers, as opposed to turbo hoppers. The, the, the problem with these cars is they're not very serviceable. Um, to any of you that have ever seen them before, they mount the bodies almost permanently to the chassis with these pseudo spring systems that would give you the indication it's a dune buggy and the, the body does not pop off the chassis. You about got to break these things back here to get the body off and so therefore any servicing is about near impossible uh, without busting something. Um, you can't hardly spread the chassis to get the motor box out or anything like this. This one, these weren't too bad. They run, uh, there's a fair amount of carpet here on the axles. We got those cleaned up. Um, but you have to run a tire of this big diameter to get the crown gear, which is a very large tooth crown gear, to get it to clear the track. So you, there's not a lot that you can do as they sit to hopping them up because it's hard to get the cars apart without wrecking something. Uh, you know, putting traction magnets in them is just is not a easy option. I guess if you didn't care if you broke these body posts or whatever these body mounts, you could do that. Put in a regular rear axle set from a Tyco. But uh, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna run it just like it is. See how they do. The rear tires and they, even for that matter, the front tires are pretty. Uh, age checked, cracked or whatever. We don't know how much grip they'll get, but uh, the cars do run on a power supply. We clean up the pickup shoes. And um, so it'll be a big adventure here in a minute. All righty guys, we got the thing put together. Um, not too bad as these sorts of tracks go. A uh, Couple little broken pieces. Uh, it, it's interesting with the die cuts, they, the way that they fold together actually serves as track support, um, which is a little ingenious on their part. I don't know how well that's going to work, but we've got it together. Uh, the Tyco guardrails, as always, are kind of cheesy. They're too short. And of course, this one being it has a lot of age on it, a lot of the posts are broken off. Um, I track powers up, the lanes work. We haven't run the first lap yet, but we're going to try. The tires are probably like little hard rocks, so we're going to see what it does when he pulls the trigger. Alright, made it over the hump on one. Ho! Give a little help. Yeah, tires are pretty bad. But uh, anyway, let's put them back on and see if we can make some laps. Turns around backwards on that one. Alright, I got an idea. Let me go uh, see if I can sand the tires a little bit and get uh, a little fresh rubber so we can get some uh, traction here. All right, so I took a, uh, an axle and a hub and chucked it up in a Dremel, put the tire on it, and took a piece of rough sandpaper, took the tires off the rims, and uh, kind of uh, got that old hard rubber sanded off, took off the center ridge, and you know, it beats a sharp stick in the eye, so we'll see if it works. Alright. Looky there. Amazing. Fresh rubber. Huh. We're getting some separation. Yeah, track separating. Mm -hmm. Okay.
fresh rubber on it does pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now there's almost not enough tire height to get over some of those humps. Well, I didn't take off much. Well, they at least need, it they runs. Big tires that go over those humps. Yeah, that's part of it. I mean, it's probably road. got a seven thirty-five gear ratio. It's a huge crown gear. Yeah, I don't know the big crown gear. I think makes it have too much acceleration. But that's what the engineers thought they needed, so, and they're not around to ask anymore. I mean, they certainly hop. Yeah, they certainly hop. I mean, they're... <laughs> <laughs> Take off like a rocket. Mm -hmm. Especially when you go over those humps, because there's no traction magnets to keep it there, so it just goes... Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've messed with worse sets than this. I think, I think the worst set we ever did was the, uh, the Marshawn, what was it, Sky Fighters with the, oh, that thing was terrible. The cars didn't go fast enough to actually go around the loop to loop. Yeah, it took us hours to set up the thing, and then the cars didn't work. Well, the bodies were too heavy. Mm -hmm. There wasn't enough power and the cars weren't fast enough and they didn't have enough traction magnets. Right. But if you hit them with too much speed, you go yeah, launch. Yeah. Although you can really just hold the stinking trigger almost steady and it just goes around the whole track. Well, most of these sets are like that. You kind of find a sweet spot for the trigger and there's not much driving involved. Mm -mm. I mean, a little better tire, fix the traction magnets, I think you could actually drive these things. Yeah, you could. It'd be pretty cool. But, and I don't know how much the power supply, you might need a power hack to this, but I don't know if you'd want a power hack with these jumps. No. That you get too much power. I added it in with something like this. All right, well, I think uh, we've proven this thing works pretty good. Um, we may play with this a little bit longer and uh, come back maybe later this evening. Uh, we'll get uh, Honey Cat in here once she comes in from prowling around outside and see what she thinks about it. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. All righty, race fans, we're back. And uh, Snowman stopped in, dropped off Fred for a visit. Uh, had a chance to work on these cars. I was able to take the back axle out of one and put a standard 440 rear axle in it with a little better tires or whatever, and it does drive a lot better. It does kind of get hung up a little bit on the uh, elevations but if you go fast enough it'll just go right on over them so let's uh get down to it and run some laps Showed up, honey bun.
Burford. That one doesn't do too bad there, for the most part. Boom. Too fast on them, them humps and mm -hmm. off you go. Fast, you gotta hit them fast enough to go up them, but not so fast you jump. Yep. And this one I gotta give it more juice. To even get it to move. It's just like more stuck all the way around. I gotta give it more juice to even get it to go. Right. But it does handle a lot better. That's probably from the gearing. Well, yeah. That's probably what it is. Yeah, it took a lot of hurt to jerky out of the car to drop the gearing to a standard 25. I don't know what that thing is that's in there now. Maybe a 30, 35 to 2, whatever. But I can, take the, I can certainly take the track factor with this car. Yeah. Because it's actually sticking. You can actually drive it. Yeah, but that's just because it's just lower. The traction magnets make it stick. tires like those they made silicon ones like that mm -hmm. and you had like those old resin neo magnets mm -hmm. that'd be a good cheap pop-up for this that would make this run better yeah. I had looked for uh, the actual quad set, the quad hoppers. Mm -hmm. People wanted so much for those, I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. you know. So this one came along as a reasonably complete, so I was like, yeah, let's try it. Some of it's like the pickups just come out. Yeah. Because there's not enough. There's not enough there. Yeah, the back end needs to be up a little bit. A lot. But, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did they just not make bigger tires? They never. I don't think they ever offer those tires as aftermarket. Mm. Well, I know they don't offer the tires that far, but nobody makes tires that size. They could, but it'd be like. I don't know. Pointless. Like half inch size. Nobody for, would want it for a standard magnet car. I'm sure there's something that could be repurposed. I just don't know what it is. Get it. Get it. Get that car, honey, bud. Get that car. Alright race fans, that about wraps it up. Uh, Tyco's Racing Hoppers Electric Racing. It uh, kind of interesting set, you know, pseudo dune buggy sort of thing at the time. Uh, I mean, I learned a few things about this. I, I thought all of Tyco's stuff at, by this point in time, this was a 1988 set, was all packaged and made in China, but according to the box, 
Um, you could infer that this box was, these sets at that point in time were packed out here with parts made from around the globe. It'd be nice if we could get back to that, but uh, that's another discussion. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and I hope to be better at getting more content out this year.